Well, hi, this is Harriet again. This is my kitchen, and here we are in Florida. All right, today we are going to do something that I haven't done for a long time. I've made a lot of bread through the years, but I haven't made this particular recipe since I was just out of college. So in every drama, there's a little bit of tension, and I wasn't, I haven't been in college since about the year of the goat. So we'll see how it works out, but I think it's gonna be fine. It's a very good recipe. We used to make it a lot. In fact, we made it, I'm afraid, didn't mix really well with getting up at eight in the morning, going to our classes, and then getting on our bikinis to go to the Florida State Pool at noon, which is when it opened. But we kept our girlish figures for at least long enough to get out of university. All right, so the first thing we have to do is we're going to, I've got a, I think my cap, I figured out an overhead camera. I've scotch taped my husband's to the top of the cabinet. We'll see if this works, but if it doesn't, just in case, I'm gonna also show you what I'm doing. So, I am, I've got warm water. Let's see, maybe I'll put this back here so you can sort of see, and my tripod is tipping a little bit. Wait a minute, my tripod, okay, so, let's see, I'll hold it back like this so you can see me and the stuff, okay. Um, I put, we've got warm water. This is, um, I'm not really sure. We used to, we've always said Brave's um, French bread, but I think it's actually Brave or Boue. Boue, I'm not sure. Anyways, here's how you say it. Here's how you look. And those of you who can pronounce it can go ahead and pronounce it. Is that backwards? Let's see what that looks like. We're going to do this one on this side. So this is Normandy French bread. And it's very simple. The thing about French bread that you wouldn't believe is that it has just hardly anything in it. What you really do need to make sure that you do, it's a really interesting tilt, isn't it? Let's make sure, it, let's see if it's a little bit better like that. Um, what you need to make sure that you do is that you make sure that the, that the um, water that you're going to put your yeast in is not too hot. So, but first of all, most importantly, you have to make sure the yeast is really fresh. So this, always check the expiration date, and if you have it in your cabinet, check it again. But this uh, doesn't expire until November of 2021, so we should be out of coronavirus by then, I'm, I hope. The famous last words if you're watching this in 2021. Anyway, so we're going to open up the, um, the yeast, and we pour it into the bowl. There we go. And let's see if the camera can show this. So we we'll pour this into the bowl. This is warm water, not hot water. It should be just about lukewarm. So when you put your finger in it, it you cannot, you almost can't feel it because it's the same as your body. All right, we get a wooden spoon, any spoon really. And so we'll stir that up just a teeny bit. And flour, it works best if it has a little sugar in it. So let's make sure it actually has dissolved, yes, yes, nice, okay, that goes in there, and we will sprinkle, this calls for one tablespoon of sugar, so we're going to sprinkle that on in, and of course I got rid of my spoon before I was ready to do so mix this up just a tad, let's make sure that's in there, and I'm going to turn the camera off because I'm going to wait and make sure that it actually rises because it would be really dumb to make this all the way through and then find that this yeast was no good. Okay, I was getting a little bit worried about whether it was working. But look, you can see, you see that the, it's jumping around. Do you see the bubbles and things that are jumping around? It's quite cool. It looks like there are little bugs on top of the surface, but those are not bugs. That is the yeast doing its thing. So I think I'm going to wait a few more minutes just to make sure that it's happy, and then I'll start mixing everything together. Okay, it's still going crazy. It's really cool. You can see, if you look down on it, that it is doing very, very, very cool things. You can see that it's wiggling around. It's kind of shimmering. So I'm not going to wait any longer for it to bubble all the way to the top, which it would do. It would kind of do a foam thing. So. I'm going to go ahead and add the flour. It calls for, this recipe calls for six cups of flour, but I am going to put in, it's, it's, but it says to start with three. So we're starting with two. one. Whoop, you remember this was a little bit overflowing. All right, so we'll do, and we don't have to, we do not have to sift this. It doesn't call for it, so that means that it's accounted for that amount of flour. And this has, you can finally have the right amount of flour in it. It actually has something that, Cuts it off on the top, so that's good. All right, 
now got the flour in there. We're going to add the yeast. We're going to do it with a spatula. Let's make sure we have it all in there. The yeast. Remember, this is the yeast and the sugar and the warm water, which now is even cooler than lukewarm, which is great. And it calls for, I wish I could find this book. It is in my house, but I did, but fortunately my friend Sue sent it to me a few months ago, so I have it. She was one of my college roommates, just a, one of my very, very good friends, and she is a fabulous cook in her own right. I think all of my friends are really, are really good cooks. Okay, so we've done the, um, we put in the, the yeast, and we put in the flour, I mean, we put in the water, we put in the sugar. We now put in two teaspoons so, so you see it. Let's see, can you see it? Kind of, let's move this a little closer so that you can kind of see what it looks like. So I'm just mixing this up. And we have, this is a really cool measuring thing because, like I don't know if you, it says, this whole, this whole spoon is actually two teaspoons. And in it goes. Okay, two teaspoons of that. Now, we're going to put it in the, we're going to put it in the, Mix master, not the mix master, what do we call this? We call this a kitchen aid. We're gonna put it in the kitchen aid. We're gonna mixing it up like this. You will not believe how easy this is to do. So far, I mean there are six ingredients all together. Okay. And I've changed over to the dough hook. So I'll put this in here. I think you can still see. Yes, you can. Like that. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to keep on, as soon as we get through with really beating it up there, we are going to put it on this counter. Super clean counter. I don't have a bread board, but that's fine because this is okay. And I'm going to actually knead it right here before your very eyes. Okay, I'm going to turn off the, button, the, the thing and then I don't need to do that. I'm just going to go and get it. All right. Now, I know you'll be happy to know that I do not feel the need to lick the batter bowl for bread. Okay, even though it is kind of good. All right, now we're going to put in another three cups. Nope, just another two cups. Hold on. So that goes in like that. That goes in like that. And I think a little more time in the would be just a great idea. It's got a lot more power than I have. All right, there it is. And then we're going to spread out, we're going to put flour as if this were a giant breadboard. It's going to be fine. Push that back a little. Right. Let's get nope. I'm probably take off the ring or two, right? Right. Okay. And so I can do by hand. Okay. There we go. Now, let's get it out. Move it around a lot. Like this. Too bad my overhead camera didn't work because this would make it tons easier for you to see, not necessarily for me to do. All right. Pile that out like that. Nope. This is why I'm wearing white. Although I wasn't sure that was a great idea when I was making the brownies earlier for those of you who have already seen some of the earlier episodes. All right, so this is going to be, we're going to knead it into this. And then you knead, kind of pull it on, double it over on itself, pull it over on itself. I want to stretch out the glutens in it. This is not gluten free. Okay, roll it over like this. This will work out, work out your hostilities, whether it's about coronavirus or your mother-in-law. My mother-in-law is lovely and she's deceased, so I'm not talking about anybody in my family. Also, about your concern that the coronavirus might get over before you get all of your closets done. Something that's on my mind. Okay, so now we're rolling it. Okay. What we're doing is we're trying to make it smooth enough that it will form a shiny ball and it's going to oh it's looking good 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 we have still got a lot of flour that's fine our hands yep you can see that this is so much fun 
haven't shown my grandchildren how to do this yet, but I think they will like it a lot. The thing is, you have to have really clean hands to do this. And I'm not sure that their hands will ever be seriously clean until they're about 30. Okay. Now, gonna keep on kneading. And I'll let Thompson decide whether this is boring footage or not, whether or not you'll cut out about now or whether you'll come back in. But I am putting more flour there. I'm also spreading this out a bit because I don't want it to stick, but I also need it to all blend out. All right, bending it over, kneading in some more. This is super good exercise. You can probably tell. All right. Not shiny yet. Still looking a little dull. Mm -hmm. More. Yep. Good. Doing very well. So when we used to make this, we get it out of the oven, and our, we had the best of intentions. With, well, we'll just wait and serve this for dinner. But you know, it's so unbelievable out of the oven, so we get out a bunch of butter and just eat it hot. It's embarrassing to think about, probably where our fat cells all started. But man, is it good bread. And it is impressive to look at, right? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut, once we make the little, we're gonna put it in this bowl, not this bowl, we're gonna put using my batter bowl, which is yellow, which is very festive. I like using it a lot because it cheers me up. And we'll kind of grease the bowl and we'll put it, we'll do my usual microwave oven trick, which is I put water in the microwave, I heat up the water, and that makes the microwave a nice vault for, a nice steamy vault for putting the, for letting any bread in. It has to rise. And we'll put it in and that's what we'll do. And it'll do its thing and then you'll be amazed. Okay, that is a pretty good loaf. Now, Next thing we do is we get out the nice yellow one. We put a little bit of olive oil in. Okay, that's fine. Just to rub it around. Okay. Right. Fine. And we'll put this nice dough in. We'll cover it with a towel. Of towel. Let's put that one on. And I'll put it in the microwave after I boil this water. And we'll see what happens after it rises. Okay. Okay. Decided not to skip this step after all in the video. So I've heated up the water and quickly, quickly, quickly put this in. And I don't turn on the microwave, obviously. And I'll let it set, and there it is in its vault. And so I'll come back in the not too distant future once it has risen. Now, let's see how long that takes. It is 20 after four at the moment. So I'm gonna give it about an hour. I'm gonna start looking at it in about an hour, an hour and a half, could take two hours. Oh, I hope we don't have fresh bread for dinner. That would be a shame. Okay, um, I'll be back. Bye. <laughs> Okay, let's see how this does. It comes out of the proofing box. And, oh, it looks really great. Okay, now the next thing we do is we shape, shape these into balls. Take this out. And we, I think we can do three. This is what I don't remember is how many of these we actually did when we were in college. Okay, so we take this, I think we'll get rid of this. Pull this over here, okay. 
and this is this one, and this is this one. Let's do it like this, and maybe a little bit more on this one. All right, I'm going to form these into balls. And we're going to sit for five or six minutes. And then we're going to put them back into, well, then we're going to let them sit on top of the counter. We're going to cover them with some, cover them with some, uh, with a towel. And then they'll rise 60 minutes and then we'll put them in the oven and we'll cook them. So I'm going to turn it off for a second while we wait for them to have a little rest. It's one of the really important things to do with dough. For instance, if you're making pasta, and I'll do that one day, but it looks like it's, whenever it looks like it's screwing up, it's usually because you haven't let the dough rest. So if I do it on a couple of balls and I start it and it looks terrible, looks terrible, the next group is great. And then the one after that is even better. And that's because they've had time to rest. Okay. They're ready for me to roll up. So, I wonder if you can see me in those little bread things. I don't think so. All right. So, we're going to form these into a little French roll them. This one over here. Let's roll these a little bit. Okay. Drag them out. Okay. Don't have to do anything very fancy with them. They just need to look like French bread. Do them like this. Okay, pull them out this way. Okay, that should be fine. Here's this one. And of course, really, the more you need them, the crunch the um, lovelier and crunchier the spread is, chewier, I shouldn't say crunchier because the outside is going to be crunchy no matter what. All right, so this is going to be, these are going to be our little ends, and we're going to let these rise for an hour, but first we're going to put slashes in them as our recipe says, and we've put, I've put flour on here. We put diagonal gashes in. Now, I've just always assumed that you put gashes in because you had to let the steam out. Because if you let the steam out, then it gets lovely and soft on the inside. I guess maybe it stays tougher if you don't do the gashes. But anyway, the gashes are kind of fun to do, so it's fine. And I think, I think if you like Cuban bread in Tampa, which has um, palmetto, brand, palmetto fronds on it, I think that serves the same purpose, is just to let the steam out of the bread so it's lovely and soft on the inside. Okay, now I'm going to let these sit for about an hour, and then we will bake them, and as soon as we remove them from the oven, we're going to brush them with a little egg white, and they're going to be amazing. They're going to be amazing. Where is the eyeball on this thing? Okay, I think if I look there, then you can actually see me looking at you. Okay, that's what we're going to do. So they're going to be sitting for a few, for 60 minutes, and then they're going to rise, and then we'll put, we'll put them in the oven. Well, we had a bit of a setback in the show kitchen because something happened to the oven. I'm sure it'll be fixed before too long. No problem at all. Anyway, so we've had to come to a friend's house, and she's got a much better kitchen than I do, so this is great. She's got a fabulous, fabulous oven. So look at the bread, it has risen. Oh my goodness, it's so perfect. So we are going to, as you can see, it looks great. And those little bitty, little bitty baguettes raised, raised right up. Now we're gonna put it in the oven and I did adjust and set it for 20, 425. And put it, go in, I had to raise the shelf to make it in the right place. Okay, that is gonna go in there. And that'll go in for, what does it say? It goes in for 35 minutes. It's in a 425 oven. So, we'll come back in 35 minutes and we'll put the egg wash on it, a little brush with egg white, and then we'll pop them in for another two or three minutes to kind of glaze it a little bit and bring them out and then eat them. Oh, it'll be so great. Okay, let's see how it's done. Taking it out of the oven. Whoa, looks perfect. Okay, now 
put a little bit of an egg wash on it. And we're not going to do egg wash on all of them because we're taking one to friends who are vegans. And so they don't love egg, they don't love, so we won't put it on theirs. But we'll put them on the others and they'll look fabulous. They'll look super glossy. Okay, this one looks a little bit deformed so that won't go to any friends. All right, now if you'll just pull in a little closer with the camera. I even have an extra person today to do it. My friend Liz, it's so exciting. This is her fabulous kitchen. Okay, a little bit more on here. That looks great. Now, we'll put it in the oven for about three more minutes. And that should do it. There we go. Okay, go in. And let's get this out. Ooh, it's really nice, really shiny. We are cutting some of this. Ooh. We don't have a bread knife, so it's going to be a little scrushy, which is fine, just fine. Okay, and butter this. We've already buttered a few. Yum. Oh, 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 oh. Some. Oh, good. Oh, good. Okay, okay. I'll we'll have some butter on this one. And, mm. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. Oh, really good. <laughs> really, really, really good. Okay, Liz, would you like some? Sure. Okay. Can you see her? Okay. Take a fresh one. Oh, okay. There we go. Oh. Mm? It's fabulous. Mm? It is fabulous. Nothing like hot bread. Mm. So, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> this is a great notice how easy that was. That took, well, it took a few hours, but each thing, as you noticed, didn't take any time at all. You sort of put together six ingredients, let it rise, mash it down, put it into the rolls, pull it out into the pieces, put it in the oven, bring it out, put a little egg wash on it, Bob's your uncle. You're good to go. Okay, thanks for watching Harriet's Florida Kitchen. Bye-bye.